While it is easy to point the finger at re-releases and remasters as an easy way for companies to essentially sell us the same game for a second time, I really like to look at these situations from two perspectives. I like how it provides another opportunity to essentially play some of our favorite games, and in some cases with having enhanced features, or just having a complete package with all the updates and DLC bundled together. And one of the best parts about these remasters is how it allows a new audience to discover a game that they missed when it was originally released. I felt this way about The Legend of Heroes The Trails of Cold Steel 1. This game was originally released on the PS3 and Vita, and it completely passed me by. Last year, I was able to give this game a proper shot when it was re-released for the PS4. Many JRPG fans were telling me to check this one out, and after putting in 150 hours into it, I very much understood why this game is so loved. These remasters are particularly handy when games from handhelds are remastered to home consoles. The Alliance Alive received the remaster treatment in 2019 when it was originally a game that was released on the 3DS and now it's on the PS4 and Switch. After completing this one, I felt like The Alliance Alive is most definitely worth playing and an underrated JRPG. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you my review for The Alliance Alive. The Alliance Alive is a turn-based JRPG that provides a familiar and fun gameplay loop. The bulk of the gameplay involves turn-based combat. While in battle, you will command five different party members and give them commands based on what you want them to do. You have standard attacks that will not cost skill points, along with a variety of different moves to pull off that cost skill points to do. These can range from attacks that hit everyone on the field, attacks that specifically do a large amount of damage to a specific foe, along with healing buffs and debuffs. On top of all of this, you do charge up a limit break sort of move that will do a large amount of damage to an enemy or provide you with some protection to your entire party based on the weapon that you have equipped. Also with this, the big caveat that you need to watch out for is that when you use it, the weapon will break. In combat, you can carry two different weapons while also having the option to fight unarmed. But this is where a trade-off comes in for some of the harder fights. Do you use your powerful move and break your weapon or do you opt to keep that weapon for the entire fight. Eventually you do get the ability to repair your weapons so they do not remain broken. Overall the combat is very familiar and enjoyable. As you can see, the combat operates how you would expect it would. Some of the enemy combinations and boss fights will give you a good challenge throughout the game. What keeps the combat interesting is all the progression that is going on in the background. As you defeat enemies, you will earn tech points. You can use the tech points as a way to earn additional proficiencies to help your characters out. With tech points, you can increase the chances of increasing your health or skill points. Along with you being able to increase the chance of learning new moves with the many different weapon classes and decreasing the amount of skill power that is required for some of the more powerful moves. This means that you can essentially take a higher end move that would usually cost a few skill points to do, and through upgrading you can make that move cost less to be able to use. As this happens, you will find yourself changing up your strategies in combat and figuring out new, efficient ways to defeat your foes. Along with this, many of the characters can be equipped with many different weapons. As you use these weapons, they will learn new moves to use for that specific weapon class. For the most part, characters are not restricted into only using a certain weapon, so you can experiment with different weapons for your party members. You're encouraged to try out new weapons from different weapon classes, since the weapon loot that you earn from the harder fights will be from different classes. So with one of my characters, I focused on swords, and then earned a high level axe and decided to give the axe a try. And since the different weapon classes have different moves, I found the options for 
combat to continually grow as I play the game. Experimentation is encouraged and rewarded. The improvements to your health and skill points operate a bit differently than you would traditionally expect. Normally a JRPG would present you with individual experience bars that you would then fill up as you won in battle. In the Alliance Alive, you will randomly earn health and skill points from different fights. There doesn't seem to be an exact formula for when you earn these increases in these two areas, but it does seem to be related to harder fights. I will get more into this area when I talk about the flaws with this game. While I have mixed feelings on how you earn more health, I really enjoyed how you had the freedom to be able to try out different weapon classes and then unlock new options for combat. When you are not in combat, you will be running around the world map and in dungeons. Both types of locations will have you encountering monsters that will start a battle. The battles are not random here, and you do have the option to dodge the encounters if you can avoid the enemy while in the open world. The game does a good job of trying to guide you to the next story beat while letting you do some exploring. The first few hours are more restrictive, but the game continually gives you more freedom as you proceed. Eventually you will earn a ship to help travel to different lands, along with an airship to explore at a quicker pace. Once you have these options, the game gives you a lot of side areas to complete if you want to. You will find these side dungeons that will have additional items, bosses, and even some nice side stories to experience. I found myself just doing these side areas for a lot of my time because of the new weapons that I would find there along with the harder enemies that I would face that would increase my chances of improving my stats. The side dungeons operate a bit differently. Normally your party's health refills at the end of each battle, unless you attract the attention of several enemies at once and go into a chain battle. While in the side dungeons you will not refill your health after a fight and you need to plan ahead and account for this especially when you're going up against the dungeon boss. Story dungeons are generally enjoyable and have you defeating a series of enemies with some light exploration and then most of them end with a boss fight encounter. Some of the dungeons try to change things up with some light puzzle solving but that's not the main element of the game. Much later into the game you will try and form alliances with different guilds. The different guilds provide you with assistance in different ways. Some will provide you with more weapons or spells to earn along with assistance in combat by by attacking enemies for you along with providing you more information in the open world. As you complete many of these side dungeons you can set up different towers for these guilds and then you can find different members in the game to join the alliance. You can then slot the different recruits into the different guilds and then that will essentially level up the guild and give you more options. As you can see there's a lot of options for different avenues of progression. While the gameplay and general structure of the game is familiar, this is an example of a game hitting the right expected beats to create an enjoyable gameplay and rewarding progression. I want to keep this section relatively spoiler free, but there are some very early, early story spoilers. The story starts out with our two main heroes. They are on a simple mission, which leads them to a dungeon that has an item that catches their attention. This results in one of them going blind and now they're on a quest to help out their world and then earn their sight back. The world is an interesting one in that the game sets the stage by having a race of demons being in control and humans kind of live under them. The first few hours sets the tone that the demons are the bad guys and you're trying to find a way to defeat them. But then the game switches your control to a new set of party members and the two of them happen to be demons from a different part of the world. You see through their interactions that not all demons are evil. For the first several hours you keep changing changing perspectives to three different party groups until they all converge into one group. The heroes are not the most in-depth, but they are rather likable. There's a few additional party members that you can earn, and one is a penguin who knows kung fu and provides some of the funniest lines in the game. Another thing to note is that the game does not have any voice acting, but there are plenty of well-done cutscenes, along with the characters being very expressive. On top of all of this, the game does a good job of mixing some of the serious parts with some of the silly ones. Like the gameplay, the structure of the story is a familiar one, but it's always enjoyable. I like the cast of characters, and I like how the game did have some nice moments of the team forming and working together with different people from different backgrounds. Two things helped the story stay enjoyable. One was how the story didn't really meander, it kept you focused on the main goal, along with being able to visit many different locations. What the story lacks in originality, it makes up for in its charming presentation and enjoyable cast. I very much enjoyed my time with the game, and encountered some flaws along the way. 
I found the progression system related towards improving your HP and SP to be a bit odd, and I think it would have worked a bit better if they tweaked it a bit. Some areas of the game seem to have soft locks on these areas, and this was a bit annoying, especially if you wanted to grind out the area to try and improve your stats, but it seemed like within that area, you couldn't go past a certain point with your HP. I do like the idea of earning more HP and SP through different means than a traditional experience bar, but I feel like the game is not providing enough information to the player, which is why it costs causes some frustration. There's obviously numbers running in the background as you complete battles that result in you occasionally increasing your health, but I think the game should present something else to the player, so that the player knows how close they are to improving their HP or SP. And while harder enemies tend to result in increasing stats, there is a bit of randomness to it, and with that, frustration. Another thing is that I enjoy that there were plenty of side dungeons to do, but most of them had a similar setup. A few had some additional side story, and I think more side stories would have given more narrative purpose to these missions. One of these results in recruiting the penguin, and I think more stuff like this would have only benefited these dungeons. At a point in the story, you are tasked at creating an alliance with all the guilds in the game, and I wish that there was something else to it other than just visiting the guilds and then talking to them, because the guilds join right away. I wish that there was some issue that you needed to solve or task that you needed to complete to make the formation of the alliance feel more earned. There are two dungeons near the end of the game that feel a bit padded out, with enemies that are not really hard to defeat, but rather take a long time to kill. While the flaws were noticeable and annoying at times, I completely enjoyed my time with the Alliance Alive. Lastly, I want to briefly touch on the soundtrack. I enjoyed the soundtrack and a few tracks really stayed with me. Here are a few tracks from the game. Overall, The Alliance Alive was a pleasant surprise. It checked all the right boxes that I wanted in a JRPG. While it presented a familiar experience, it had enough charm and care to make it a memorable one. The combat was enjoyable with some hard boss fights and many different options for new ways to tackle fights, along with the many awesome progression systems. The story was enjoyable and I liked the cute presentation. If you're a fan of JRPGs, then I would highly recommend you play this one. Thank you very much for watching.